Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is Player Camera Manager, the Play Camera Shake Node. We'll go ahead and run through our quick example. When I hit play, and then I hit play shake, we can see the camera starts to shake. And it's basically going to play back a camera shake object, and that's it. That's what the play camera shake is for. Let's go ahead and look at the node itself. So from the player camera manager, you can do shake, and you'll find the shake nodes. Play camera shake is the one we're going to look at here. And this is how it comes from default. For the input nodes, we need to put in a shake class. We need to put in the scale, the camera space at which it's going to play, and then if there's any user rotation. Now let's look at the one I've set up here. This is something that's important. By default, if you've created a new project, you're going to have just the camera shake. This is what it comes with. This is our base class. If I was to hit play and hit play, well, you'll notice it says shake started, but nothing happens. Well, the reason for that is the camera shake is a base class. The base camera shake class, this object right here that we've actually created in our project, has no settings at all. There's no shake settings, there's no rotation settings, nothing's going to happen. So because of that, well, by default, nothing's going to happen. Let's see how that works. So the camera shake class can be created by going to blueprint under all classes, type in shake, and you'll find camera shake as our root. I'm not going to cover the camera shake class or any of the details. That is a separate video, but I'll quickly run over how it works just so you can get a feeling for it. If I open up the camera shake class, we'll find a bunch of settings. These settings determine, let me open it up all the way so you can see, what happens when you actually run the camera shake? Things such as durations, time fading in and out, what actually happens, such as rotation, locational offset, and field of view changes. You can also set up an animation to play along with it. Basically, for my example, I've just set this up. So over two seconds, I'm going to have a few different random degrees of rotation, just slightly here and a few different random degrees of location, and that's it. So that way when I go in here and I choose my generic camera shake and hit play, it's going to go ahead and play my settings inside of my camera shake object. Now after that we have scale. This is an amplitude basically of how intense to make it. Right now we have a scale of 1. That means whatever settings are inside my shake, that's what we want to play. If I was to bump this up, let's hit play f first. And you'll notice the amount that it moves. Let's bump this up violently to something like 5 and hit play. And you'll notice a huge difference. It's basically taking my values in there, such as 2 or 5, and multiplying it up by 5, and I'm getting a much larger version. So you can use the scale to have one general shake and then alter it based on maybe how violently you want the player to be hit. Now our next thing is our play space. Basically, if you're using oscillations and camera animations, if we go back into our camera shake here, if we're using animations here and we're using oscillations here, like our field of view, location, and rotation, it's going to default to the camera's transform, the location, rotation, and scale of the camera in order to play. We can adjust this to something like the world or user defined, which is down here, and that's going to offset where it's going to be played. It's primarily useful if maybe you need something to be played out as an offset or you are you don't want the shaking to come maybe from the head. Maybe you want the body to drive the shaking. So you could use that. For the most part though, since you're going to use this for simulating maybe a hit effect or something like that, it'll probably come from the camera local. And then we have our user local space rotation. If we have user defined chosen, we can set this up and basically this is the actual coordinate space we want to use when we're playing the shake. For the most part, you can keep these things as they are. Make sure you adjust your scale as needed and make sure you choose a custom camera shake class that you have created. 
Now you do have one output. This will be your return value. It's going to create a camera shake. Reference variable type. And those are useful for the other nodes such as stopping it and things like that. So that's it. That is going to wrap up our play camera shake node. Keep in mind it is part of our camera manager. So only if you drag off will you find your camera shakes themselves. And make sure you create a camera shake class. Using just camera shake is going to give you no actual result.